There we go. Okay. All right then. Um, because I'm looking off the tablet, I have to come over and check see if anyone's got any questions. But otherwise, remember, if you're on a computer, you should be able to click gallery or speaker view and see everybody. Uh, I can just see me. I don't know how this works. You can just see me. All right, that's good. That's all I need to see, really, I guess, for that. Um, and we're going to work through the form today. I'm going to start working on uh, using the five listening exercises and bring it into Cloud Hands. Because Cloud Hands is the same kind of movement as the Pulse Monkey has. Uh, and I'm going to build it on from there. Okay. All right. The session's recorded. Hopefully, everybody's been able to look at the ones I put onto YouTube so you can catch up on what we've been doing. I'm not sure when I stand back how uh, good it is because usually when I'm at home, I've got a separate microphone plugged in and it's a nice quiet room, whereas I'm sat on the patio and there's traffic passing in the distance. There's um, also a big truck quite close. And then there's obviously birds singing. I was going to have a barbecue, but I think that would be really taking the mickey. If I start cooking a barbecue while I was talking to all of you and drinking gin and having a barbecue as well, I think I'd be pushing my luck too far. But okay, all right then. I hope you've been practicing. Stand with your feet, shoulder width, nice and relaxed. Bounce. Before, before I went away, I tried the tablet down in, in Koch Park. So we went to Zoom live from the park on the tablet on the tripod. It seemed to work, so I bought it on holiday. So I'm looking around, computers and microphones and that kind of stuff. So it's nice and relaxed. If you bounce forwards and backwards. Even when we're doing this, we're looking to bounce, 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 bounce. Getting used to the idea of bouncing into the muscles, bouncing into the muscles, bouncing into the muscles. Much like if you're bouncing a ball, you know, it bounces and the energy comes back, it bounces and the energy comes back. So when you're transferring weight, bounce from muscle to muscle, and mobilizes your body, change legs, bounce from leg to leg, mobilizing your body. Shoulder width and exercise number one. And here, looking up through your arms and out, extend, turn, up, extend, turn. Talk number two, turn your waist, turn your arm. Cool. And this movement you really see in client hands, which we're going to work on a bit today. Turn. In. Turn. So here, again, you turn your waist, turn your waist, turn. We're going to work on this in cloud hands today as we say turn. So weight in the left, turn to the left. Weight in the right, turn to the right. Center, left. Center, right. Center, left. Center, right.
He's folding from the hip joint, folding, turning. You can see here, as I turn sideways, I turn from the joint here, and then I'm in the center, fall. So opening the shoulder joint, body turn, release. From here, compression number three, two, three, four, up, one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, four, push your feet into the ground, you expand up, one, Stand up two, and up three, four, press down one, two, three, four, push your feet into the ground, you expand up one, two, three, four. Okay, and next size number four. Here, open the chest, elbows forwards, hands down and back, forwards. Remember what we're doing here is mobile, what you're doing here is mobilizing all your shoulder blades. Your hands back, forwards, elbows forwards, hands back, forwards, elbows forwards. Plus dropping, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop. Hands together. Push out, bend your knees, swing through. So you might blow your spine. Side to side. Rotating your spine. Roll your shoulders. Very blows your spine and hips. Forwards, knees forwards, curl up to your body. In around about six times. Drop. Hands together, push, bend your knees, swing through. Side to side. Roll the shoulders. Forwards, backwards. Forwards, curl up. Okay, new body shake. Stand on one leg. And take your ankle round and round. Up and down. Swing. Nice and loose. Circle. There's a leg. Lift your knee. Sit down to your hips. Rotate on the way, up and down, swing, circle, knees and feet together, rotate your hips, lifting your lower back. Okay, shake. So, even from the very beginning of the form, as we start to mobilize, it's important to realize that although Chen Wen Ching style is very relaxed, he's still relaxed but alive. Song doesn't mean dead. Song means song means relaxed and alive. So even when I stand up close, you can see my hands now. So even from the very beginning, when I start your preparation, as I sink, chest opens. 
even from the very beginning of the form, as I sink, I don't just bend my knees and let my arm, let these arms hang by my sides. As I sink, I sink and open. It's almost as if this is just the right height or not. If I, put, if I put my finger on the top of that chair, you can see here, when I sink, it doesn't sink down the chair. It sinks and stays where it is, and my chest sinks and opens. If I exaggerate it, I'm doing this, but what I'm doing is this movement here. So I'm sinking my chest, plucking my back. As in the classics, it says, sink your chest, pluck your back. So here, I sink my chest, pluck my back. So this relaxes down, shoulder back alive, hands alive, fingers alive. So if I touch the top of that chair, I sink, turn and open. That's it. So I sink, turn and open, and back. Step shoulder width, turn my waist, change waist. So my waist 50 50 back to the center all the line all the time my hands are alive it's almost like i'm running along the seam on my shirt they're moving as i move you can see for me if i turn a bit closer i sink hands come alive i turn i step out boom. the beginning in hands alive push Reach, reach down, extend down, all the way down to the function point. Okay. So I'm just going to do the form there. Hands up, elbows back, step ball, push, down, reach down, pull up left, turn, roll back. Separate, shoulders relax, and lift up, push all the way around. Open, lift hand, draw in and down, pause and shoulder, white train spread. Open, press into step, open. It's always somebody comes late. Step up, leg is off, push it to step, through and push, flick down, parry and punch, sit back, bend, always make a fist, step up, parry. Close up, back, cross down. Fifty fifty at the centre, cross. Grace Tiger returns the mountain. Turn and open. Roll back. Press. Separate. Push. Diagonal single whip.
the key thing is, although I'm sitting backwards, I'm not sitting back. I'm sitting backwards into my back foot. But from that position, without moving, I can jump. So it's important to remember, when you sit back, don't sit back to you. Your bum should not pass your ankle. So in terms of mechanics, when you're in the back leg, if you think the sitting bones, which are the bony bits underneath your bum, I think it's called the Jewish ferocity, something like that anyway. But the bony bit underneath your bum, that should kind of press towards your ankle. So you can't, you're sitting that bit into your ankle, not over your heel. So that when you're sitting the back foot, when you sit to the back foot, you can see that bit here doesn't pass my ankle and it actually activates the spring and it comes into my foot. So when I'm in the back leg, Pressing my sitting bones into my ankle, it activates the springy ligament in my foot so that my foot acts like the spring, and then through my calf and thigh, or oh, sorry, through my calf and thigh, all that gets under load. Wants to remember that little, there's a little, a little toy that we had as kids, maybe it's kind of a little frog, and, and, you, and you pressed it, and you'd sit there and wait, and all of a sudden you go. Phew! And the little spring of tension in this little little bent frog, when you press it down and let go of it, eventually the springy tension in the frog would fire it up in the air because it would overcome the suction, it would fire it up in the air. And your body has that, this uh, springy uh, power. And it's called potential, and it, it has this potential to do something. So the kinetic energy is the storing of it and, it, and the potential, or potential storing it, it releases. If you think, if you push a spring down, that power builds, it should be able to fire. And that power is what enables us to keep moving through Tai Chi. It's um, continuous movement. It makes the energy potential kinetic, potential kinetic, store, release, store, release, all the time firing. So when you're in the back leg, and you're pressing into that foot, I'm not, I'm not leaning backwards. I'm loading, 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 so that my ankle is flexed, my knee flexed, my hips flexed, my foot springing, and the whole lot wants to fire. Fire. Okay, so I'll sit back. So each time you do a pulse monkey, you're moving, you're moving your um, hand over your front foot, you're moving away from your foot. But you're loading this back foot, it's been loaded up. So you can see here that on tram lines are not turned in. These are on tram lines, I'm loaded from that foot to that hand. Remember this foot, I'm loaded from that foot to that hand. Quiet. Which means if someone's pushing you, load will lead them in, and the turn, an extension in the front of hand, will fire them off at an angle forward and away, take the roots. A bit like, it's like roll back. It's the same here. Just open and extend. So that's what it's called repulse. So you step back to repulse. And that extent, the power from the back will come through your body and through the opposite hand and that. Here, opposite hand and that. Okay. So if, you, if anybody if anybody's experiencing a class, it, it feels very much like you're running through a wall. You, see, you, you come towards somebody and they're in a monkey, they put their hand out, it feels like you hit a wall because your pre, your power flows into that body and makes more instant compression. Fires them up pretty quick, hits them very hard, depending on the amount of energy they put in, the amount of energy they get back. It doesn't affect you because you're just under compression, they're the one that get fired off. And coincidentally, I've been using this kind of movement as well, where I've been cutting the grass on the bank and weeding out the bushes, lifting, moving branches, just doing stuff. Okay, now, you're good. So from here, the false monkey, it's in diagonal flying into cloud hands. From the last repulse monkey at the end of the street, from the last repulse monkey, I'm going to pull down to the left and wind my waist, pull down to the left and circle. 
Um, from here, I'm going to move down to the left, wind my waist up, and hold it. Pull down, wind my waist, turn, look to the corner, step to the corner, change weight, and move diagonally, line with that foot, shoulder, hip, everything in line from half to shoulder here, and turn. Okay, I'm all prepared with a little bit of wood to demonstrate. From, from the last repulse monkey, and this is green. Four, turn, to the corner I'm going to, step through to that corner, step through to that corner, move in line with that corner, so knee, shoulder, hip, so a uh, cow, mid shoulder, that so comes through cow, shoulder, up and turn diagonal. You should hand up that kind of hand that you're in. Hand up. So my right hand is in line with my right foot. Right hand in line with my right foot. And I'm looking that way as if I'm holding a big staff or a big pole. Left hand, left hand is slightly flexed. As if I'm holding right hand is out. So, old lefty is about uh, the top of there's a grinder here, so about here. Lefty flex there. Righty. You can't say, uh, I love Paul Yorick, I know him well, that kind of idea. Right. They're connected together. Cow, shoulder, boom. And then turn. And as I turn, I bring my waist around and my foot around. Cow, turn. I'll just do that again. Try and get an angle for you. Then open the hips, move in line with my knee. So my knee and my foot and shoulder all in line. And as I turn, I bring my left foot around. Right by the hip and up. So the diagonal fly. Yeah. Turn around. Step through. Through. And turn. Okay. So the, the important part is like is everything in front you all the way to the floor? straight line and then when you're on the axis then you rotate a straight line then rotate you can see from here turn round step through straight line through that leg and then turn and then rotate and then like more like the right foot the feet are parallel. If, you, if your heels turn in here, you won't get the angle round. If you put straight like it should be, and then you turn around. The angle here is going to be what's not, 120, 120 degrees. If that foot was turned in, you won't get the angle round. Up and turn. Okay, up and turn. The key part is if you don't, when you're here in the false monkey, if it's back foot, the heel's turned in. When you're here, if the heel's turned in, you won't get around. It's got to be parallel. You've got to be parallel. So that when you turn, there's enough angle in your hips to get the 120. So when you come through in a straight line, the left foot comes around. Okay. So here, turn. So you might put your, your left foot straight, turn, step through 120, you got the angle correct, the heels aren't lining up or anything, through and down. Now you'll see here that when I turn, round, up, it's very tempting to, to line those heels up, it's very tempting 
kind of line these heels up. And then you just fall over. Okay. That's why it's important that when I turn step, I step, and then when I turn around, I'm on shoulder width. I'm not on a tight one. So have a few goes. The key part is that when you turn, that you make sure your left foot is was straight before you went round. You wasn't at an angle. You make sure your your feet are parallel. When you step back, your feet are parallel. Back foot isn't turning. In. So your feet have to be straight. And when you turn, you're looking to open your hips first, which will get you about 120. And you step through a straight line. But so I step through. So I've got 120. I come through in a straight line. When in a straight line, I can turn that foot and my feet will be shoulder width. So I know I've moved down to the, the camera so you can see. And we'll feet the shoulder width. What is very common with any of the diagonal movements like diagonal single whip and diagonal flying is that people hang on the feet and then before getting the tight rope rather than keeping the feet parallel and moving the whole body at an angle. I'll keep the feet and then try and do the angle by and it just makes you on a tight frame. So if you feel unstable, it's because you, you want to check are you still shoulder width? Or did you just jump and be shoulder width? Or did you turn your feet and get narrow? So just give that a go. Through a straight line. Make sure the foot, knee, and hip all line up. Come through, you're moving diagonally. Foot, knee, and hip all line up. Shoulder lines up. And then when you wait, with your weight on your right leg, everything's correctly lined up. You're going to turn from the joint here and rotate. See so the square into that front. Feet, shoulder width. You can see. I'll have to move the So you can see here. Yeah, feet, shoulder width. Body lines up to the front. It would be no different. If I, instead of being called diagonal flying, if I leave my feet exactly where they are, if I move my hands toward the right, move my hands toward the push, move my hands to sing the whip, it should make it no different. Move my hands toward the right, move my hands to the push, move my hands to diagonal flying. The foot position is no different, you're just at an angle. So if you Put your hands in double push, and your foot position is right for that posture. It's right for diagonal flying. If you think, okay, well, I'm doing diagonal flying, so it must be like that. But when I do a push, it's unstable. That's because it's wrong. Does that make sense? Are you okay with that concept? Right. Always look. When you've done that posture, check the shoulder width, and it's slightly longer than the shoulder length, but um, that you best pretty much a rectangle. All you've got to do is move your hands. So you're in single whip or you're in a double push or in ward off or ward off or you're in diagonal flying, or you're in roll back. Just change your hands to one of the other positions and if the feet still feel right, then it's right. If the feet feel wrong, then it's wrong. You are now challenging your body. As you work your way to the form, you're challenging your body to do different angles and different positions so you can get more balance. It's the same as we do in life, you know, whether you are cooking the tea, which is on the way right now, or whether you are um, cutting the grass, or whether you're doing the shopping, or whether you're doing the martial arts. It doesn't make any difference. The correct body movement is correct body movement. Bad body movement, neck is your body. If you're trying to cut the hedge and you're twisting yourself, well, like I was doing some stuff today, I was changing some curtains. If I'm trying to change the curtains by stretching and reaching, makes my back hurt. Because mechanically it's bad. So one works, all work. One doesn't work, all doesn't work. Okay. If we go from diagonal flying, straight, go from diagonal flying, we're about 30, 40 degrees to the corner. We're going to go straight across the plan. So diagonal flying, turn to the corner right around you. Turn, hold the ball, step up to your right foot. So left foot, change weight to your left foot, like a passing down, lift it up. Turn, hold 
turn to the left. What you do is you turn, that turn, making it full, that leg completely yang, which is completely yin. If you fold the hip, that will release your foot. So we'll just mechanically do the movement first and we'll break it down. Turn, step up, change, turn, step in, turn, step out, turn, step in, turn, step out, and before we go on to diagonal uh, symbol, but single bit. As we're doing this movement, and with this kind of tick tock, tick tock, tick tock with the hips. If I reverse it here, when I turn, folding here is a joint, when I turn, this will release his foot. So when I turn to make the ball, that releases my left foot, and, and then that makes completely yang, and it's completely yin. Turns, release, step up. See? Diagonal, turn, release, step up. Change weight. My left foot, turn as I fold here. Turn, releases my right foot. Turn. And this, this sinking, making it completely yang, and this one releasing, lets the foot draw in. I have got to go, release footstep. Change, turn, release footstep. Change, turn, release footstep. Change, turn, release, footstep. In terms of distance, you're going about one to one and a half. One to one and a half. One to one and a half. This is where it feels comfortable for you, for your hips and your natural gait. So the movement is generated from here. So when I turn here, I release this leg. Turn it here, make this leg fully substantial. This is substantial. This ball is empty. This yang, this yin. As I pull up here, this release. If I'm pulling a piece of string on my knee, I turn, release, that can step. So I change, I turn here, I turn, that release, that release. I turn, I can step. Change, turn, I can step. It is, when I want to step out, it's kind of as if as if I compress in this leg, compress this leg, squeeze that foot out. Like a tube of tough face. Squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. So when you're first learning, it should feel quite a mechanical movement. But it's, you're getting used to your body being more aligned. You get used to releasing weight more into the leg. This weight releases and the waist turns. The weight releases, leg turns. As this weight waist releases, leg waist turns, that leg's free to kick, free to step. Change here, again here, this, this movement here, remember? Here, here, here. Pull. Yeah, as this turn comes in, to pull the leg in. Turn, open out, look at that. Turn, pull in. You're getting used to this feeling of turn on. The martial application is stepping away, packing down, and down, packing down, hit, and down, hit. Here. And here. Turn. Mark, can I ask a question? When when you're in White Crane Spurs' wings, that's a bit early. Flying. Uh, diagonal flying, sorry. Yeah, diagonal flying. So your right foot is at an angle, but at some point you bring it in to be parallel with your left. So when, when, when you're here, and your, your body, so if I just, so my, my right foot pointing 30, 40 degrees to the corner, so I'm diagonal, yeah. I'm to face the front, just the same as if I was doing what I push. I'm really just dying. Okay, and then I'm going to go in a straight line across now. So I don't have a diagonal, I'm going to go straight line across. So, diagonal, diagonal single bit, turn, step up. When I change, when I turn, that'll straight my, um, okay. my right. All right. Parallels and walk along. 
it, it comes around when you turn your your body. That makes it. Is that was it you're asking? Yeah. It, it, in other words, your foot comes around when you turn your body. Okay. Say that again. Your foot comes around when you turn your body. Yeah. Okay. What, what I'm noticing is doing it on a tablet. The speakers aren't very good. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then I can just hear the birds singing. I can hear a bit in the background. But yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah. Do so your um. When you turn, it brings your right foot round, and then they're parallel, and then walk along parallel. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thanks. Diagonal, foot diagonal, turn, step up. That foot's not going to be straight. When I change and turn, that foot straightens up. So now my feet are going to be parallel. So in, out, in, out. I go diagonally across the patio to all, all the slow bang with string. So up. If I put this in a straight line beyond my feet. I turn and I step up. Change weight. Turn and then my feet are parallel. I'm going to walk along the straight line along the stick turn, step it in, step it out, step it in, step out, step in. And I'll just do another one just for the sake of it to the line. And then I will step forwards and then ward up and then think of it. <coughs> but it is good to get for exercise. I mean, thanks for asking the question for exercise. It's good to get a straight line, and you know, a nice little stick. So here you can see, although I'm diagonal, when I turn, I step up. I've got a straight stick behind me. So when I turn, I feet the parallel and directly in line with the stick. Step in, turn, step out. He would step forwards and through what up left, so what up right in it, round, single way. So from here, last one, step forward with your right foot, from forwards, you doing what up right. Turn, hold the ball with releasing your left leg and step, come through and turn. So now we are going to go into uh, squatting single width, no stank people. You can see at the moment, what I'm doing is we can still show the width, but the single width is just longer. Okay, single width longer. Okay, how are we doing with that? Unfortunately, I can't, on, the, on the tablet, I can't see put everyone on the screen at the same time, I don't think. Um, oh, here we go, I can. You know, you can do that, there you go. Yeah, it's all looking okay. You know, you can do that, you can find some out every day. Come on, Isabel, I can see you practicing. <laughs> Now I figured out I can see. The cloud hands, you're just walking your way across. <laughs> you can't just wave your hands anyway, it's not Charleston, you know, you gotta. <laughs> The, the idea is that you've got this kind of wave your hands in the clouds and this comes up as if you're looking. The way to think of it is like the bottom hand is kind of brushing diagonally, like you're brushing crumbs off your table, and the front hand is in front of your face, 
and you turn at the waist and change, brushing across. If you, if you uh, have a, um, a vicious inclination, the martial application is if somebody punches in, you reach around the back of the neck, hit, and then you take the head on your arm, <laughs> around, and then obviously we're a nicer class here, so we tend to say, hi there, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. <laughs> so turn around. If someone punches in, you take the punch and you turn, take the hand and you take it underneath. They make like a wrist lock or a wrist lock depending on which direction you're going. The top hand face towards you, turn. You can see here, as I change, it's in line with center, but as I change, my shoulder my, and everything rotates. And it naturally rotates, comes up in line with my center. I turn and as I turn, the shoulder, elbow, and wrist, and everything all rotate and elbow down. So it goes from facing to turning. And then move, this comes up. As, it, as I turn, change and turn. Change and turn. So I'm not, I'm not rotating it, I'm releasing the joint. And so as I turn, it turns. Remember this exercise we're doing? Yeah, you hear same. The cloud hands change and turn, change and turn. You can dive and flying, change, so you can dive and flying here, turn. Change and turn, change and turn. All the time, elbows down and out, down. So the shoulder joint feels open, hand on your center, down and out, down and out. When we get to the end of cloud hands, and last cloud hands, and turn and step forward if you're right. So from the uh, left cloud hand, turn, and if you turn into the left leg, and release your right foot, you're going to step forward. Come forward as if you can't do your water right, and turn, hold the ball, release, open your hips, sinking your weight into your right leg, step as far as is comfortable, and then way to get further is not. Lunge, but you sink. If you want to step further, you've got to sink down lower. Step, change weight, and turn. The spot in single whip should be about single whip, maybe half again. So, single whip is uh, about here, so just past heel and toe. Spot in single whip should be about half again. Wherever it's comfortable, you don't have to stretch all the way across the room, you just have to make it more comfortable. So, as I turn, I sink, step out, up, and turn. So I'm watching my left leg. You can see that it's a, a larger. Our face is close, you can see. And what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to my left leg. I'm going to turn my right foot out back to the corner, 45 degrees. Change weight, moving through the knee and hip. Bring my left toe in, about 45 degrees. And sink down. I'm sitting into the back leg. I don't. It's not leaning over. I'm just going to sit down and sink. Boom. Okay. Then turn around here. Turn my right foot out, 45 degrees. Move out to my right leg. Bring my left toe in, about 30 degrees. Sink down to my right foot. Down as far as the trousers will let you, or your body will let you. Walking single 
straighten your right foot, do your left foot, straighten your left foot, come through into your left leg, straighten your hips, and come through into your left leg, and then up the golden. Okay. So when you're doing down, uh, uh, squatting single whip, snake grip down, when you're going to act as a single whip, make sure that you sink your weight down just as far as it's comfortable. It doesn't matter if, even if you're only doing a short high stance because that's what your body wants you to do today, that's fine. Same thing applies. Even if I'm doing a short high stance, turn my back foot out, my right foot out 45 degrees, move in line from my hip and my knee, bring my left toe in about 30 degrees, and I'm just going to sink down as I'm sitting into the back leg. Doesn't matter how low it is, doesn't matter if it doesn't look, it looks more like a teapot, that's fine. Just sink comfortably so you're pressing all the load into your right leg and straighten your left foot, come through your left leg, where your right hips up to your front leg, bring your knee in, through, and up. So you're pushing up off your supporting leg. It's very tempting when you do uh, golden top stands on one leg because you've just done and uh, snake grips down. It's very tempting to come through and try and jump up the back leg. You mustn't do that. You've got to sink down, straighten through, come through into your left leg, square your hips up into your left leg, square your hips up into the left leg, bring your right foot in, and then stand straight up. So if you can't, if your leg strength doesn't allow you to do that, stand shorter. Don't try and do some great big massive touchy shading movement that you've seen on YouTube. Stand a comfortable distance that your body will support itself in a way that your muscle tone can move your body. So we'll go from here by taking a big low stack shorts. What are they shorts? You can see the tan line. <laughs> so when I'm here, oh you can see the tan line now. And when I come through here, as I straighten my left foot, move my body through to my left leg, square my hips up. If I can't get my body weight forwards, my body weight, if I take such a long stance and my body weight stuck in the middle here, I'm not going to get forwards. So if I want to come forwards, I need to go under and then up, and through, bring the foot in, stand up. If you take a massive single whip like you see on YouTube, they can never get up. You've got to get all the way through, all the way turn, all the way through. You've got to get your body weight all the way through to be able to get in. Just take a small single snake grip down. Here, turn, from, come through, turn. And my body weight can easily support itself on one leg. Okay. Let's see, let's see you all do it now. I'm watching. That's good odds. I like that. Let's go your hip, take your time, in and up. Excellent stuff. The power of Kataji comes from your ability to support your body weight through itself. If it's not structurally sound, if you can't support your body weight when you move, you might look nice when you move quickly, but if you can't support yourself, if you, if you can't do a single leg squats, you can't do it. That's why by the time you get to golden cock, your mobility and your stability and your strength have been building. Because in effect, you've got a knee from the floor. You're not kneeing from lifting this up. You're not, not kneeing from lifting this. You're kneeing from standing up on your supporting leg. That's what I like to see. Let's have a look. You slack enough and having a drink. Oh, I don't get a drink yet. No, ten minutes. Then my tea will be ready, and I'll have earned a drink. I think. Every day. You okay, Phil? 
You, you, you're, Phil, you're, it's perfectly acceptable if the snake creeps down, if you walk and stick him on end to give yourself a bit of a prop, it's perfectly acceptable, you know, to give yourself a lift. It's perfectly acceptable to go, snake creeps down, through it up. It's perfectly acceptable. Here's what's provided. Oh, that's a stuff. Okay. How you doing, Bob? You okay? All right. Let's have a look. Oh, oh Bob, his headphones. I'm, I'm liking the organisation there. That's proper. Good to see you, Marianne. Okay. Right then. By the time you get to uh, Snake Creek Dam and Golden Cop, because you're not in a rush to get there, by the time you get there, your stability, mobility, and leg strength, the core strength, should have been building. It's such a rush uh, in uh, Western world to get there, get there, get there. But if you get there too soon, you won't have the strength and ability to do it, and you'll it's very easy just to jump off rather than group down with through turn with your body in, set your body up. Okay, that's all looking good. I remember we did number number three exercise. When you get compressed, 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 expand, 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 expand. That happens here. As it moves through. So that creeps down. I mean compression. I move through underneath up. So number five exercise square. Now this is a compression. I'm gonna move my body in and then expand up. So you want to move my body in, align the knee, move the square here, in and up. So I'm doing single leg squats in effect. So don't rush. If it feels uncomfortable, take a shorter stance. What's most important about learning Tai Chi is being mechanically correct. Because overall, if you keep having it in your mind, the Tai Chi is a musculoskeletal rehabilitation system. Yes, it's an effective, massively effective martial art, only if your body's working correctly. Otherwise, you're trying to use strength. Different thing completely. If you align your body correctly, if you use your joints, ligaments, and tendons correctly, you start to train your fascia to function correctly because it's just designed to all be there. What we've got to do is start fighting it, taking your time, adjusting your stances to shoot, suit how your body feels today, being mindful of that feeling through your muscles, and that pressure through your alignment, an intentional tone in the different muscles where your balance feels. That's what Tai Chi is. Tai Chi is not the pattern. Tai Chi is applying body mechanics and all the natural hydraulics and pneumatics and tensile strength and elasticity, all the things that this wonderful mechanical structure. If you strip it back to bones and ligaments and muscle, you can see little elastic bands or ligaments and tendons stretching and flexing it and pulling it, making all these levers function correctly and all the muscles storing, storing the energy and releasing the energy. If you take your time and are mindful when you practice, then just a couple of movements will give you all the Tai Chi you need. And if you start to learn more of the form and look at more of the angles and more of the manly postures like we're working through towards four corners and, uh, soon, as we get to this, you start to look more. It's just the same as that we're flying. It's just the same a single whip. <laughs> Where's my body weight? How am I mechanically functioning? Does it feel that I'm loading the muscle so it's getting compressed and storing? Does it feel like I'm releasing that muscle through the movement? And can I apply it if I'm picking up a table? Can I apply it if I'm pushing a person? Can I, can I apply it if I'm standing out of a chair? Jenny always laughs and she likes to take us to DFS because all the furniture in DFS are made for six foot six people, not midgets like me. So when I sit on them, I look like a little diddy man. My legs don't go over the end. So you have to slide yourself up and almost fall out of their furniture. 
But in good old days, when furniture was um, ergonomically designed to suit the human body, you move much better and move more correctly. So what I'm asking you to do is when you practice this high chi, whether it be for health or marketing or even both, is that you start to look at the mechanics of the movement. Am I moving through my body and up? Am I applying all of my body or am I just using my knees and my back or my hips? When I challenge myself with Repulsive Monkey, where's that compression and expansion coming from? As I move through diagonal single whip, how am I opening my hips? How am I lining my foot and knee? And as you move into cloud hands, how am I enabling my feet to step in and out, in and out, in and out by moving my hips? The snake creeps down, just open the joints and get a large expansion and then turn and get that single whip and a half in the vest. And you want to get up into golden calf. I'm positioning my hip correctly so that I'm moving in and up and through my legs, but I'm trying to jump off the back leg and not fall over. When you move into balance, golden cock is quite easy. If you move too quickly without paying attention to the structure, then losing balance is also easy. I've got no problem with you using a chair for some kind of support aid to help you get the feeling as your alignment and tone improves. Take smaller positions, smaller postures. When you feel more loose, take larger postures, but don't overstretch. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you all for uh, joining me today. I just see if I can change the camera thing. I hope you've all uh, practiced. Um, my tea's all cooking nicely. My gin is nicely chilling. And, hope, and I've got. I hope, hope mine is as well, Mark. <laughs> And so I've even got my Cornish necklace on, and I've got, um, yeah, I've got a top up my suntan. I didn't realise until I just did snake creeps down. It's already a tan line on my shorts. I'm only been here a couple of days. <laughs> All right. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Excellent. Let's have check through. There we go. Fabulous. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Yes, good to see you all. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Because I don't wear them anymore. Yeah, I think it's 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 Thank you. 
You'll have to go first. Well, it might have this uh, television thing, you know, or it always goes in this. Well, I don't know, there's some I stop in there, and this is stop in there. You didn't think about it. No. Try to get that out of me. No, no. Well, what am I going to do? Put this one. Yeah. That's a big size. Well, roll that one. Okay. You're so as big as this. Oh, my God. Down there. Down there. Down there. It's blue. Yeah, it's blue. Yeah, it's blue. I 
Thank you. 
What do you say I do? It doesn't stay. It doesn't stay. Not too You're right. Yeah. Sure. That model of white now, that is the mistake. Yeah, the white now, that is the mistake. So, the mistake is the mistake. You will be so. Once you get with them, they have a lot of areas. Right? One of them is the other. Okay. 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 Yeah. 
she wants to talk about. That's a bad Ele está chifrado. Não vou Uh, 
We'll put him back together again then, Richard, and found him up and tell him that I want it. We'll stop going on then. Yeah, 
I would help you, but man, for uh, lunch, you are actually the book. What, no? I would help you, but I'm Can you make sure just kind of push me to don't get rid of all these bits? I'm <laughs> 
Bye, Mama. Bye, Mama. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, Jack. Yeah. Yes, yes. Are you sure you're going to have it? Yes. yes. Right. Right. See, I'll bring some. Uh, Practicing that for Yeah. All right. Okay. See Can you get the hood back? Oh. Uh -huh. 